watching Analog Output. I'm Rich Holmes, and I've got a box. And in the box, I've got what? Well, if you're having trouble reading it, I can't blame you. But it says Scrub Modular. This is the Mini At Kit. What's a Mini At Kit? Well, let's take a look at it. Okay, here's what's in the kit. We've got not very much. We got some jacks. One, two, three, four, five jacks. We've got two potentiometers. We've got two toggle switches. We got two mounting screws. We've got nuts. Got four nuts that go with the switches. And I got five nuts that go with the five jacks. Got two resistors. We've got a front panel. And we've got a circuit board. And that's it. I'm gonna build this. Should not take very long. Okay, so what is a mini at and why am I building it? Well, this is a passive attenuator module. Passive meaning it does not consume power. In fact, if you notice that list of parts that I went through does not include a power header. It does not even connect to the power supply. All it is is uh, a panel with some jacks and potentiometers and resistors. And you've got two input jacks, each of which connects to an output jack via a potentiometer which allows you to attenuate the signal. There's also a switch that allows you to turn on or off each of the two channels. And the outputs are normaled to a fifth jack, uh, which is labeled sum, so that if you are not actually plugged into the attenuated output, the attenuated output goes to this uh, this sum output and so you can actually use this as a passive two-channel mixer if you so desire or you can use it as two individual attenuators and why am I building it why do I have the desire to build an attenuator module well think about it like this let's suppose you had a perfect synthesizer now, what do I mean by a perfect synthesizer? Well, for one thing, I mean it's perfect for you. It's not going to be perfect for me. It's not going to be perfect for anybody else, but it's perfect for you. And the other thing I mean is that it's perfect for its size. That is to say, given that it's got, for instance, an oscillator or two oscillators or whatever number of oscillators, it's got the right number of filters. It's got the right number of amplifiers, it's got the right number of noise sources. Each of these has the right number of inputs and outputs and features and it's got all the features that you want to have in the quantities that you want to have them. It doesn't have features that you don't want to have. It's just like the perfect synthesizer for its size. But let's suppose you wanted a synthesizer that was larger. You wanted to expand it. So you expand it by adding, for instance, an oscillator. Well, having added the oscillator, you no longer have a perfect synthesizer because it's no longer in balance. You've got this oscillator, but it needs to be balanced with other things. What do I mean? Well, for instance, this oscillator, you're probably gonna wanna control this oscillator with keyboard control voltage. Okay, or in other words, you've increased the number of places that you want to send the 
keyboard control voltage to. That means you have an increased need for buffered multiples. And if you originally had the perfect number of buffered multiples, well, now you don't. Now you need more. You um, also, well, if the oscillator is like the uh, Bifaco even oscillator that I built, it's got control voltage inputs for volts per octave and FM and pulse width, but it doesn't have knobs to control the response to those control voltages because the front panel is limited size. It's not a 14 HP front panel or anything like that, so there's not enough place, places to put knobs. So you just have an oscillator that responds to the full strength of the control voltage you send it, and if you want to uh, reduce the sensitivity to the control voltages, you need to attenuate them. So you now have one more oscillator, and that means you now have more need for attenuators. And if you had the perfect number of attenuators before, now you don't, now you need more. The oscillator also has output. What are you going to do with that output? You're probably going to send it to a filter, right? And you're probably going to send it to a filter along with whatever other oscillators and noise sources and audio sources you have. And you want to mix them before putting them into the filter. And so what this means is you now have an increased need for mixers. If you had the perfect number of mixers with the perfect number of inputs before, now you don't. So by adding this oscillator to your system, you've created a situation where you now need more buffered multiples, more attenuators, more mixers. All of which is aside from the fact, the problem that I noticed before, which was that the Mother 32 keyboard control voltage isn't working properly with the external oscillator. And the claim is that what you need to do is run it through a buffered multiple in order to get it to respond properly to that control voltage. And there is a buffered multiple on the Mother 32, but apparently whatever uh, impedance mismatch or whatever it is, is the problem with the key keyboard control voltage also affects the buffered multiple. Because if you run the keyboard control voltage through the Mother 32 buffered multiple, it still does not drive the external VCO at one volt per octave. So <laughs> that's a particular circumstance in mind, but even without that circumstance, you still have this increased need for buffered multiples. Alright, and the Mother 32, well, it's probably not a perfect synthesizer for me, and it's probably not a perfect synthesizer for you, but let's say it's close. But, you know, what does it have? Well, as I just mentioned, it has one buffered multiple uh, with two outputs. For attenuators, well, it has a mixer which uh, has one input normal to zero volts, so you can put something into the the second input on the mixer, it's it's got two inputs, and take the output and use the knob to control it, and that gives you an attenuator. So you have one attenuator on the Mother 32 patch panel. Mixers, well, there are two mixers, two inputs on each. You can take the output of one and put it into one of the inputs of the other, so you can mix three signals together that way. So you can have you know, two two-input mixers, or effectively one three-input mixer, uh, that is, if you are not using one of the mixers already as an attenuator, if you are, then, well, you only have one two-input mixer in addition to that. So you've got one or two two-input mixers, you've got one attenuator, you've got one buffered multiple. It's not a whole lot of capacity for buffered multiples and attenuators and mixers. So, yeah, you probably need more if you're going to add an oscillator, as I just did. So. That being the case, here I am building an attenuator. And what else is in that box that I showed you at the beginning? Well, there are two other kits in that box, and I will let you take a wild guess as to what those other two kits are. Anyway, here we are building the attenuator. There are, of course, multiple 
attenuator kits out there on the market. Why did I choose this one? Well, no particularly profound reasons, I suppose. It's compact. It's only 2 HP wide. It's inexpensive. I think the full kit was about $25. If you want to source your own parts, you can certainly do it for less. Probably the one other option I was considering was actually another one from the same company. The uh, Atenu Mixer, it's called. And from the description, it sounds as though it's essentially, it's just a three input version of the same thing. Three inputs, three outputs, and one summed output. But I decided to just go with the smaller two input, two channel one. It's an easy build. It's all through hole, few components, nothing particularly challenging about it. It's quite suitable for a, a beginner's uh, project if you've never built a Eurorack module before, if you have limited to no experience with soldering before, then this is perhaps a good one to get started with. There's a pretty good um, building guide online. Lots of color photographs showing you just exactly how to do all this. Thinking toward the future, I'm thinking, you know, maybe I really will need more attenuator channels in the not too distant future. And maybe I'll just build another one of these at some point. Or another two of them, I don't know. Any drawbacks to the thing? Well, the front panel is very decorative. It's not particularly legible. But, I don't know, how legible does it have to be in this particular case? You kind of got to know which one's the input and which one's the output, but once you've got things plugged in, all it is is obvious knobs and obvious switches. Being a passive unit, it can't amplify, can only attenuate, it can't invert. It is not suitable for every sort of purpose you might imagine, but for a lot of what you need when you just want to take a control voltage and reduce it for a more subtle effect, it's perfectly fine. Okay, we have, uh, let's see, we've got the LFO cranked up into the audio range on the green cable, and we've got the VCO on the yellow cable uh, going into the two inputs, and we've got the output going into the external audio in, and if we turn up the knob, we do indeed. Attenuation of the VCO there. And if I take my output from here, that's the, uh, the LFO. We got control over that. And if I take my output from up here and crank up that one and that one. A mix of both. They sound a little distorted at the end, but uh, but yeah, there we go. And if we do that, it turns off one of them, and it turns off the other one. Yeah, it works. So there you are, one quick and easy attenuator module built and working. And as I said, there's two more modules in that box. I'm gonna be building them pretty soon. So subscribe if you wanna find out when those things happen.
Uh, if you enjoyed watching this, please hit that like button, and I'll see you next time on Analog Output.